God is good. And all the time, God is good. Dear friends, today is probably the last Sunday of Advent. The liturgy we celebrate today probably will bring to an end Advent season. Maybe on Tuesday, 24th of December, we end totally the Advent. But before today, the church, in our wisdom, has led us through a liturgical moment, beginning from the first day of Advent. The church has guided us through this moment before today. Like when we started the first Sunday of Advent, when we lighted up the first candle of Advent wreath, which we know the four candles here each represents some important moment in the church. The first Sunday, the candle represents hope. The second Sunday, the candle represents peace. The third Sunday, the candle represents joy. Why today, the candle represents love, which is the culmination of the whole thing. So the, 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 the church has led us through this moment of Advent, beginning from the first Sunday of Advent till now, try to teach us, or in a way, try to prepare us for the nativity of Christ, the birth of Jesus Christ. When you go to the first Sunday of Advent, we see the prophecy of hope Isaiah prophesied about the coming of Christ. Make the mountains, level the mountains and the valleys. Prepare yourself for the coming festivity. We cannot talk about hope without having an iota of peace. When we talk about hope, we hope there will be peace in the future. The second Sunday, talks about peace, the peace the king of kings will bring to his people. And we cannot have peace in a fool without having the fullness of joy. That is what the third Sunday talked about. The joy the king of kings, Jesus Christ, will bring to every heart that receive him. And today, the church wants us to speak on love the incarnate love of God made manifest in the person of Jesus Christ. When you read the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 14, the Bible said, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That is Jesus Christ, the incarnate word of God, the love of the Father that dwelt among us. When you read John, chapter 10, verse 16, the Bible said, for God so loved the world, that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. It is because of the love of the, God, love of the Father that he sent the son, and the son accepted to come to redeem mankind. That is what we are celebrating today, dear friends. And when you read Second Vatican Council, when you read the document, Dogmatic Constitution on the Divine Revelation, chapter 2. It says that Jesus Christ is the fullness of all the revelation. Jesus Christ is the love of God made manifest in our world. That is why he took flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary to redeem mankind from their sin. There is no other love, there is no greater love than this that to lay down one's life for one's friend. And that is what Jesus Christ did for us. So we cannot talk about hope, talk about peace, talk about joy without talking about love. When we go to the terminus earthquake, we will learn to the terminus earthquake, the point of arrival and the point of departure. And that is Jesus Christ, the incarnate love of God. The message has changed. The message is no longer prepare the way for the Lord. The tune of the message has changed. 
The message is, how prepared are you? It is no longer prepared away. How prepared are you to receive the Messiah? How prepared are you to welcome the child Jesus Christ? How open are you? How receptive are you? See, the attitude we are called to imbibe in this fourth Sunday of Advent is the attitude of openness and receptiveness to the will of God in our life. In as much as we get busy decorating our houses, in as much as we get busy buying Christmas gifts, we should be make sure, we should make very, very sure that we don't lose the reason for the season. The reason for the season is Christ. When you get too busy in other things and forget the reason for the season, which is Christ, who we come to dwell in our hearts, who we come to dwell in our homes, then we are missing the mark. So dear friends, when you look at the readings of today, you see that the first reading, King Ahaz was not prepared to receive the message of God given to him by the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah said to him, ask for a sign that God will give to you. But King Isaiah was focused or put more trust in himself. He was able to reject the message of God and focus more on his own power. He went about worshiping idols, bringing all kinds of different idols from different crowds to worship them. He wasn't prepared to receive Christ, but God gave the message to him that a maiden will give birth to a child, and that child shall be called Emmanuel. When you come to the gospel reading, Joseph was prepared. Joseph was prepared to receive the message of the angel. The message came to him in a dream. He received the message and did exactly what the angel said to him. So now when you compare the two, King Ahaz and Joseph, where do you belong to? Where do you belong to in this season of Christmas we are getting to? King Ahaz was not prepared to receive the message. Joseph was prepared. He received the message and put it into practice. So we are called to imitate Joseph in her diligent way, the way he carried out the will of God in his life. He was open and receptive to the will of God in his life. That is why he was able to take Mary and our child Jesus Christ and took care of them. And so dear friends, in this Eucharistic celebration, let us ask God to strengthen us so that we may not lose the focus of the season. In as much as we prepare ourselves in one way or the other, getting things put in place, let us not lose the focus of the season. Jesus Christ is the reason for the season. How prepared are we to welcome in in our hearts? Christmas is not about the time it happened. It continues all through our life. How prepared are we to welcome Jesus in our hearts? What gifts are we ready to offer to him? It is no longer the gift of gold. It is no longer the gift of frankincense. It is no longer the gift of man. The greatest gift we can offer to the child Jesus is the gift of our hearts. How prepared are we to, are we to offer this gift to him? And so dear friends, let us ask God in, in this mass to make us understand what the season is all about. And so prepare ourselves to receive the child Jesus in purity of heart and a life of holiness. May the Lord bless his words in our hearts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.